Kuglers, this is Alan Paul. So I want to welcome you all here today. We're going to do something a little different from the norm. I've had a normal playthrough, of course, uh, which I'm still working on at this point. I have a No Man's Sky 101 courses that I'm doing. I uh, haven't picked that up in a little bit, but I'm probably going to be getting back to it soon. But I decided to do something a little different, to do almost like a No Man's Sky 102, like the next step up from just the basics. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a normal playthrough, but I'm going to customize it just a little bit. So we're going to stick to normal mode, but I'm going to drop things down a little bit in the sense that all I'm going to do is get rid of the tutorial missions because I want to approach it from a different point of view. So let me confirm and start this and get this loading up. Okay, and we're on our way. What this is going to entail is just teaching you some of the generalizations that we all take for granted when we play No Man's Sky. A lot of us, when we first started playing it, had a lot to learn, and we stumbled along the way. And I don't think really there's been too many videos to say, this is something you want to do, and this is something to look out for. So, without knowing the storyline, and not getting into that, No Man's Sky is a procedurally generated universe in which you, you can see the character standing there, pops up on a planet in the middle of nowhere and you don't know what's going on. And you have to find your ship. As you can see, use X to summon your ship, it says. But it requires all kinds of things to happen along the way. You are in a planet in the middle of nowhere. And in some cases, it could be a dangerous planet. Uh, in this case, if you look at the bottom left, you'll see that my, while my health is okay, I've got a bar that's dropping, and it's indicating that this is radioactivity. So this is a radioactive planet I'm on. So let me start by just finding a safe place. Um, we will come back here um, and take a look at certain things, because I see something in the ground here, and I really, 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 really want to get that. But I would like to find some way of protecting myself first. Um, it looks like, and I'll come back up here, that there might be something over this way. Possibly a cave or a hole I can hide in for the time being. Doesn't look like much, yeah. Anything will do. So we'll just take a quick look around, see if we can find some place safe to dig my way into. That eh, looks like there might be something over there. Or possibly even closer. Okay, so you got plants all over the place, things that you're going to step on and climb over, and things like that as you're running through your landscape. You have a jetpack that you can use to give yourself a little boost to places. And you have something called a multi-tool. That if we take a look at our inventory here, by hitting a certain button, you'll see that you have a multi-tool that, that has only in it a mining beam, and what looks like a piece of technology that is currently damaged that you need to fix, in this case a scanner. So as we're going through this, and if I can see if I can find again a cave or something I can get into here in order to protect myself, this looks like it might be something. Aha, there we go. All right. So we're in a cave here, so let's talk a little bit. So this, this multi-tool you have is a C-class multi-tool. So the classes that you can have, it starts at the bottom, and the lowest class uh, device, uh, tool, uh, upgrade that you can get is C-class. There's a B-class, there's an A-class, and then finally the maximum, which is S-class. And you'll tell them by the colors and obviously by the letter that's on them. Um, this multi-tool is very handy to use for great many purposes and there are better ones obviously out there that you can find rather easily the problem is is that some of the ones you find may be damaged or the ones that aren't are going to be very expensive so we're going to try to fix this one up and the first thing we need is to get some ferrite dust ferrite dust can be gotten from rocks and you can look around and say oh yeah well i see rocks all over the place here but these rocks contain cobalt not really useful to me the little rocks which none of these are available to me will contain something else now let's see if i can get out of this cave temporarily Yep, it's going to let me out sooner or later, and we'll get up this wall. I picked the only cave I can get out, knock it out of. <laughs> uh, I might be able to get up that hill there. Okay. Oh, great. Let me get away from that. 
sometimes there's other exits to the cave, so sometimes you can do a little searching around. Worst comes to worst, I'll figure out a way to get out of here. But again, you've got rocks. I can't shoot certain rocks, but I can shoot these guys and get cobalt out of them. So just by holding it down. And it's a very inefficient means. You can see the unit at the top right is heating up rather quickly. So getting upgrades for it is going to be necessary in order to, you know, get where you need to go. And we're going to continue to discuss things here. Here we go. Here we got some ferrite dust. Now we need 75 ferrite dust to repair the device I have in question. And once it explodes, you get more out of it. You see, I went from 1, 2, 3, it counted up. Now I got 32 out of that one rock. So my purpose down here is to figure out if I can find another rock. Looks like I found one, but this one's a high-end one. Pure ferrite, so I can't really get that. But I got plenty of rocks down here, so let's take advantage of it. But it's the upgrades I want to get to. And upgrades for your mining tool, for everything, is going to cost money. It's going to cost, in this, in this game, it's called units. So everything is called units. The distance are called units. But there are other types of forms of money, and one of those forms is in the presence of nanites. Nanites are a special type of item that you can get that will allow you to um, purchase certain items, upgrade other items, and one of the things that you can purchase is upgrades that we just discussed. So, And everything on this planet is usually interactive. So I can interact with this marrow bulb. I'm trying to grab it. It's not allowing me. So if I use my laser, I can get some marrow bulbs out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab that just so you understand. So everything is interactive in some way, form, or fashion. And now, continuing in mind that you know you have planets that you will acquire. See, these plants, you notice that the, the difference between this one and this one is that the circle is solid, which means it has this little uh, diamond in the middle indicating it needs to be mined in order to pick it up. See? Okay. And same thing with certain plants. Plants that do the same thing. This plant doesn't have a mining. It says just to hold down the E button on your keyboard. And you can open it. And I can grab this albumin pearl. Albumin? Albumin? Never knew how to pronounce these words. So I'm going to grab as many as I can. And why? Why is that? Well, like we said, we want to make money. And if we go to our inventory, we're going to find that after picking these albumin pearls up, they're actually worth a little bit. So that's 53,000 units of albumin pearls. I also picked up my ferrite dust, and I got plenty of that now. This marrow bulb could come in handy. It's not valued at much. But you'll notice that it says that they're harvested, and harvested by hand in the wild. That's not really true, because we really had to mine it in order to get it. But we can actually turn this into something else later on. And then you get geodes on occasion when you're mining rocks. And all you have to do is hold down your E button, analyze it, and it'll tell you when it turns out to be. So let's see, I have 175 and 69. Let's see what we get out of that. We've got a bunch of cobalt out of it. So that's good. And cobalt's worth some money. But it's also a useful item. You'll also notice in your technology that you have a lot of different areas up here that you have access to. So these are different areas, like my health suit, uh, my hazard protection part is at 100% currently. It was dropping earlier because of the radioactivity. Um, my life support's down a little bit because obviously I'm using oxygen and I'm breathing in and out and stuff like that. And then you have a jet pack, which you got to keep an eye on. And you can get upgrades to all of these to help increase uh, everything, really. For instance, if I get upgrades to my life support, it'll make it utilize things more efficiently. It'll drop slowly, or slower, I should say. Uh, same thing with your hazard protection. You can add things to hazard protection to increase it, make it slow down a little bit. Or there are certain specific items to allow you to withstand certain environments and give you an extra shield towards it. So if I can find a shield for radioactivity, I can put it in here next to the hazard protection, and it will absorb all the damage that I'm taking before my hazard protection has to kick in, which is very handy. And then it's recharged with batteries. And you can make those batteries later on. Again, we won't get into too much detail on that. That you can find on some of my other episodes and other people's episodes as well. So now that we have enough ferrite, we can go to our multi-tool and we can fix this thing called the scanner. And I want to do that because there's some very interesting things you can do with a scanner. The first thing it gives us is it gives us the ability to uh, scan the environment with the letter C in this case. And it tells us what's around us. Now you don't see too, too much, but it tells us that there's some sodium over there. 
uh, oxygen up above, more sodium, some hydrogen. In this case, it's dihydrogen is what it's called in this game. Uh, oxygen and other elements that we can find in scanning. Now, another thing we're going to need besides having a scanner is something called an analysis visor. And this is what it looks like. We definitely want one of those. This is your early game money maker. Amongst everything else that you can gather, which is like these albumin pearls, you want to be able to produce the, you know, get these things. Now, I need to make a carbon nanotube, which means I need carbon. So guess what I need to do? I need to find a plant that I can get this from. Now, these plants are unharvestable. See, I can't get anything from them. But I definitely need carbon for two reasons. One, it's to produce more items that I need. And two, to recharge my mining beam. You see, it's down to 18, and I'm running out of power on it. And if I run out of too much power, I won't be able to get any more carbon. There is an alternative way to get carbon, but we're not going to cover that right now. So let's work my way out of this cave, and I, once I get to the surface, I'll bring you all back in. Okay, and we're out. So we don't have a, an analysis visor, right? So we can't really determine what things do. But if we get close to it, it tells us that this one's carbon, and we're going to go ahead and harvest it with our mining beam. We got 30 carbon out of that. So let's get as many as that. Of, as, of, uh, can't talk anymore. As many of those as possible. Uh, let's see. This one gives salt. We're not really interested in that. There's some more carbon. Let's go ahead and grab it. A uh, little guy right there. Let's go ahead and grab that one too. The more we can grab, the better. We'll need a few hundred of it right now. You see our mining beam is getting lower and lower. But the more carbon we get, the better off we'll be. carbon from these plants. Looks like we're at just about 200. And this should be the last one. Ah, we got it just in time. So we're out. But we have 252 carbon. So if we charge this up, it only takes 80 to charge it. We're in good shape. Now we need to get this repaired. We need a carbon nanotube. So I'm going to make that real quick. There we go. And now we can fully install this. What does this do for us? You notice that suddenly I have something at the top of my screen that gives me direction, tells me where my ship is, which happens to be over there. But it also tells us all kinds of other elements around here, other things that we can find. Now, more importantly, you see those red dots? Those are animals. So if I zoom in and scan this animal here, watch what happens. I just got 1,600 credits for discovering an animal. So early game, this is the way you want to get some more money, if you will. This is the way to get it. It's not just looking at the animals, but you can look at plants. You can look at these objects on the ground here, the what we call structures and stuff like that. Minerals, I'm sorry, minerals is the right word. Uh, anything you've already scanned will come back and tell you what it has in there. But sometimes you run across things that have not only a primary element, in this case this says ferrite, but it may have secondary elements. For instance, this one has a secondary element. Let's see what it's got. Dihydrogen is the second element in there. And this plant, some of these plants may have other items in them as well. Ferrite dust is in that one. This one only has one item in it. Still pretty good. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, this looks like there's another animal right here. So now we've discovered a few animals, but you notice at the bottom right it says I found two of seven species so far. Why is that important? Because this is the early game way of finding or getting more. Let's go ahead and discover these real quick. Of getting nanites, because you get a bonus for discovering all the animals on a planet. Okay, so I just spent a couple moments, or even a minute or two right now, looking at a bunch of items. I've already got 6,000 units on me. So that's not pretty, that's pretty good money to start with. It's not great, it's not millions, but it's a good start. The albumin pearls I picked up worth 50,000, so we're going to get some more money from that. So let's make our way over to the ship, which we have to repair to get it up and running, because obviously it's in bad shape. And again, I'm not going to go through the entire storyline, so I'm going to go ahead and just pick up some items. 
We don't need the goop. You could process that into other things, but there's no reason to. See, I got nanites out of that, so I now have 29 nanites. You need a lot more. But always check as many canisters as you can. Nothing found. These require certain types of passes to get into, but once you get those down the road a ways, they come in handy. But try to check out every container that is around, because you could really use the, in the stuff inside. Sodium. Sodium's handy for charging things. And I got dihydrogen out of there, too, so that's good. Uh, projectiles? Well, I don't really need them yet. But here's the reason why you like sodium. Because you need to recharge this hazard protection, you recharge it with sodium. Look at that. And that dihydrogen jelly that you just got? Very handy. Because in order to repair my ship, one of the things it needs is a dihydrogen jelly. So, good thing I found it. Let's go ahead and put that in there. So anyway, you notice that there's also this little thing here. Now, I have another episode, even a short, that describes exactly how to get buried technology. Normally, you have to dig down. But if you go into first-person view, which you do that by going into this setting here and choosing this, which I'm going to give it a hotkey. So when you do that, you go into first-person view. If you get really close to it, it gives you an E and allows you to pick it up without digging. Now, why is that important? Because you know, you get, see how many I got? One, two, three. So, how many are those worth? Let's take a look, shall we? Those are worth 156,000 in comparison with these five that are only worth 50. So, pretty much worth it. And this is, again, early game things that you can gather in order to get money. So, I suggest doing so at your, at your every opportunity that you find something. Now, you happen to have a cave nearby, so if you need to park yourself in there to get the, uh, cooled off, you can. Um, these plants are actually supposed to be on the ground. This is oxygen. I'm going to go ahead and gather it because you can use it for just about everything. There's so many different applications, not just to charge your life support. But it's a good idea to gather up the oxygen while you're here. So we need to repair the rest of the ship. So what else do we need to do to repair it? So we need a hermetic seal, metal plating, and then a pure ferrite. So we need metal plating. To get metal plating, we can make that ourselves. And it's made from 50 ferrite. Now you remember, we've already got some ferrite. So we'll make one, and it says that we do have enough to make another. But I would need more ferrite in order to make more plates. But I need two, and I'll show you why. So before we get started on that, I need more ferrite dust. So remember, we scan these items here. Your ferrite, I can't harvest that one or mine it, but I can mine the other rocks, like those over there. So let's go ahead and get some more ferrite dust. Meblegite. Meblegite. Meblegite, I guess that is. Anyway, we always could use more carbon, so you might as well grab it while we're here. So I'll go ahead and grab those, get them out of the way, and let's grab some more ferrite dust. More ferrite dust. The more we get, the better. Oh, an animal. We should probably scan that animal. Or did we already scan him? He's green, so that means we scanned him. But there's some red ones up there that we haven't. So let's just take a quick peek. There he is. Little guy. Okay, so that gives us number three. Now, you know, as with any planet... Check the sky, because sometimes they have some kind of flying creature that you should scan. But if you're wondering what kind of creatures are around... Oh, looks like there was another one over there. Sure enough, let's zoom in just a little bit. Uh, very strange mushroom-shaped looking guy. Okay. Alright, so we got another one. That's four of seven. But if you're wondering where they all are, you go into your discoveries. You can take a look at them. And here they are. The ones that you found. And it also tells you what other ones there are. It looks like we have two underground and one lying animal. Okay, you know, bird, bird-like creature. So we have three more animals. So we're not going to find any any above ground anymore. We'll find two underground in some caves and one flying around at some point or another. So we'll take a look and we'll keep an eye open for that. So this here is dihydrogen crystals. Remember that dihydrogen jelly? We need that too. You usually need as much as this as you can get. But you can process those jellies into dihydrogen at some point or another. This is a very useful element, as almost as important to get as ferrite, as carbon, and as oxygen. 
So gather up all the elements you can. That is the first thing we will always tell everybody to do. You are always constantly reminded of what you're forgetting. Until you're dumb enough not to pay attention to it and you just get hurt by it. Alright. I think we have enough ferrite at this point. So let's find a safe place to stay and we'll build the things we need. And we'll get to that element that you just saw in a moment. All right, so we need to make, remember, we need to make a metal plate, which we've already made. We do need a hermetic seal, which we need 30 condensed carbon, and we needed 50 pure ferrite. But we can't make those. And why is that? It's because we can't get them as base elements yet. But there is something we can make, and that is a portable refiner. We needed that one metal plate, which I left on my ship, Stupid me. I'm just going to make another one because I really... No, it's too inefficient. Uh, it bothers me. My mind doesn't like it. Let's go ahead and grab the metal plate from the starship. Are we close enough? No, we're not close enough. You will get things that will allow you to... There we go. And I'll put it in my inventory over here. Okay, back in the cave. Back in your room. So we need that metal plate in order to build this, and we needed 30 oxygen, so good thing we found that. So we're going to make this refiner. Now these refiners, they work, this particular, the small refiners always work off of some kind of fuel, in this case either carbon or condensed carbon. We're going to put some carbon in, but I'm not going to put the whole amount in. We don't really need that much. So we need pure ferrite. How do we get pure ferrite? By putting ferrite dust in your refiner, you get pure ferrite. So we're going to lower that down to 50 because that's all we needed, and we'll go ahead and pick that up. And remember, the other thing we need we needed was condensed carbon, about 30 of it, in order to make our hermetic seal. So we need to put carbon in here, so, you know, use a little bit of math, except rather than a 1 to 1 ratio, this is a 2 to 1 ratio. So 2 carbon makes 1 condensed carbon. It seems to make sense, right? Don't know why it doesn't happen that way with ferrite to pure ferrite, but pure ferrite to magnetized ferrite is the case. So let's go ahead and get our 30 condensed. And by the way, you can find condensed carbon on the planet as well. And we'll point that out at another time if you don't already know how to find that. All right, so we're done making things out of this. But one thing I'm going to show you, I didn't mean to do that, sorry, is if you take this marrow bulb and put it in here, it gives you sodium. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's a quick way of getting sodium if you can't get to any very easily and you're in a cave. Now, if I pick this up, any carbon that's left in it or any resources in there will automatically come with it. And it appears in my inventory, as you can see. But I'm going to put it down here for now along with these. So there's our condensed carbon, you notice. Here's our regular carbon, and I'm going to move some things around. I always like to keep my oxygen up here along with the regular ferrite. And then I line things down. So I put the pure ferrite here, and I put my condensed carbon underneath there. And I put these off to the side because I don't really, I'm not as concerned about them just yet. Okay, so now we have the ability to make a hermetic seal, since we have 30 condensed carbon. So there we go. Um, and then we already have 50 pure ferrite, so we should be able to prepare our ship all the way. So let's go ahead and head out. There we go. Make our way over to the ship. Okay, we'll access the menu and go to Starship, and we now have the 50 pure ferrite. So that part is now fixed and repaired, and we need to repair our pulse engine, which we needed that one extra metal plate I did, and the hermetic seal. And the ship is now repaired and ready for flying. So it comes standard with the photon cannon, standard with a rocket launcher, which we can get rid of or keep later on, and all the accoutrements that you see here. Okay? including this to help charge up our pulse engine. So if we want to, we could take that and put it in there now. And it used up about 30, uh, pardon me, 80 of it. Okay. So that's good for our ship. So let's talk about, let me get in here for just a second. I want to get to a save point. Let's talk about animals. 
and the creatures that we have to have yet to discover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to try to find these last three creatures and I'm going to show you what happens when we get all those. So I'll be right back. Now believe it or not I still haven't found this last creature but I wanted to show you this real quick. If you've run across an abandoned structure these have whispering eggs. Gathering them will give you a lot of money. You can also convert them into nanites as well by processing them in a refiner and can be a quick early way to get either a lot of units or a lot of nanites. However, it comes at a price. You don't want to get attacked by these guys. Okay? Because they spit at you, they jump at you, they knock you about. It's If you know what you're doing, it's okay to gather them. You just got to keep moving. But I don't recommend doing it if you're a little nervous about doing things like this. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. And we'll be back in a little bit. I've run across a couple things that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. And we'll spend the last, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so discussing them as we go along. All right. Right back with you. Another early game loot idea is to find places that have that are considered observatories, like this one right here. Uh, not only observatories, but also tracking stations. You, know, you can find crashed freighters and stuff like that. Crashed ships, pardon me. The observatories, ignore the man on the floor, the observatories usually will give you access to this. The pattern seems clear, but what to enter? And it always goes in a pattern. If you look closely, you could probably see the pattern. That the pattern next is going to be 8273. Location in the distant stars. So it discovers a location on another planet. So once you have your ship operational, you can go to this other planet and find usually some sort of an ancient ruin. Ancient ruins will point you to a different ancient ruin, which in turn will provide you with an artifact that is worth a lot of money which I will show you that in just a little bit. Uh, this last creature is very elusive. Even though it is only considered uncommon, it is not a rare underground creature, but for some reason, it will not appear. I've found the flying creature, I've found every other creature, but I haven't found that one. So that is the uh, problem with discovering all the creatures on a planet sometimes. It's always those underground creatures that always cause me issues. But while we're waiting for him to appear, I'm going to show you something. So you'll notice that these larval cores are worth quite a bit. At three of them, they're worth 70,000 apiece, whereas these are only worth 10,000, and these are worth 52,000. So larval cores, by far, are the most expensive item you can find on a planet by itself. Now, getting into other things, I you'll see I have this particular item, a hard frame engine, which is from a Sentinel. Well, why, why in the world, how in the world did I get one of those, right? Quickly take a look around in case you populated real fast. How did I get one of those? Well, I stumbled across a Sentinel pillar, and in the process, it gave me not this multi-tool, which is my original one, but I was able to acquire one for free, and that gave me this multi-tool. So, let's discuss some items on here. So first of all, it's an A-class multi-tool. has a couple extra slots, but it is going to require, require repair. Looks like uh, a good amount of ionized cobalt. Um, some items that I can't... I think I can produce microprocessors, but not... And hermetic seals. But the one thing I can't get is a wiring loom, which I'll have to get from the station. So I'll need two of those. So I could repair all this. And it gives me a bunch of upgrades. So let's look at this. So this is a mining beam. It gives me a whole bunch of mining beam upgrades. An A class, a B class, and then the highest, the S class. The S class is the ones you really want to look for if you can. Because they contain the most upgrades and everything like that. So that gives you an idea of what you're looking at here. And a lot of times how you arrange the upgrades has a lot to do with how powerful your mining beam will be. So by putting it adjacent to the mining beam, and maybe put the mining beam on either side of it would actually be a better idea. So if I take this upgrade and put it here, it ultimately, all three of these, will enhance the mining beam in its maximum. So that way when I'm mining something, it takes a far less amount of time to mine the item. See how fast it's going around? Two, three, see? Whereas if I switch over to my other, that's not what I want. 
if I switch over to my other multi-tool, you see how much slower that is with all the upgrades. So that's the purpose behind getting those upgrades, is to enhance devices. And I mentioned that there were three types, the, the C, the B, the A, as they work up from the lowest to the highest, and then the S class. There is another upgrade that you can get, the Sentinel Weapon Shard or Sentinel Upgrade Shard. They always have an E for, uh, pardon me, they have a question mark as far as to their capacity of grade level, if you will, but they're worth almost as much as an S class. And occasionally, the roll will give you some, some sometimes better options than the one that you currently have, than you can get with an S class. They a lot of times can be better. So you just have to keep rolling them and seeing which ones you can get. All right. So it looks like I have a little bit of ionized cobalt now, and I can make more by putting it in a refiner. But it should enable me to open up one of these slots. Like, not that one, but these ones along the bottom I can. So let's go ahead and get those up and running. See? And I don't have quite enough to get that one going. So that's an interesting thing to be able to be to do, if you will. Sorry, seeing if the creature popped up, but he still has it. So that explains the upgrades a little bit and how those work. Um, so now that we have this particular observatory, this is one last thing I'm going to show you. And we're going to go and search out this observatory and check it out. Be right back with you. And we're back, so we've discovered the ancient ruin on another planet. This happens to be a paradise planet to boot, so which means that weather will always remain constantly nice here. And usually they're quite pretty. Like this has rolling fields of purple, so you know, you gotta love that. And everything glows in and out. That's very pretty. This is a very pretty planet. Hmm, maybe I'll even keep this save and use it. Who knows? Always get your words of wisdom. Learning more about the life forms of a planet, by accepting that knowledge, you will increase your understanding of the language and you'll understand what's happening more. So, before I do this, I am going to grab... Yep, oh, there it is. There's always two on this particular structure. And again, it seems like a lot of work, but you can get more out of this. Mollus of scattered children. Together they convince. That's not what I was looking for. Hang on a second, folks. So the lesson to learn from that is be careful what you click on. So, yes, we can learn more about them by speaking, seeking more help with language, which is what I accidentally selected. But if you seek knowledge of the past, it will show you a different ruin of something you can dig up. So let us give us our historical data and it points us at usually a structure not too far away 17 minutes away but we will take our ship over there now I'm not sure how much is left on our launch thruster let's find out okay we should have one more launch left so that'll get us what we need and again this isn't very far away you'll see it's only 20 seconds away so we'll stay put here Again, very pretty planet. There doesn't seem to be any water on this planet. So we may do a little creature search here, and I'll show you what you get as far as the bonus is concerned. Excuse me. There we go. I'm just going to park over here. So this is where you need to have a terrain manipulator. So I've went ahead and installed one on my multi-tool, not this one. Let me go ahead and uh, show you the other multi-tool real quick. All right. So you see I installed the terrain manipulator. I wasn't using it too much, but for this kind of option, you do need it. So what you're going to do is when you look around, you're going to see different, what looks like uh, at first knowledge stones, but there are artif artifact fragments underneath the ground. There's several of them. There's not just those three. There'll be some over here, and over here, etc., etc., as well as occasionally the gravitino ball. Stay away from the gravitino balls for now. But there's always going to be one other item, and that's a large artifact crate. Now, in order to get this crate open, let me show it to you real quick. There it is. So, in order to get this crate open, it requires 
three ancient keys. You can see repair ancient key. So we need three of those. We get them from the artifact crates. From the artifact fragments, pardon me. Now, the easiest three to get to, there's always going to be one here at this archway. As you can see, it's a pavement, pavement stone. Just go down the archway, and here's your first artifact fragment. The other two easy ones to get, there's one inside this structure here. You just have to go down a little bit. See? Number two. And you're going to follow this one, but it doesn't go straight down. It goes to the right. It comes down here, and then goes this way. Always to the right, and there's your artifact fragment number three. The easiest three to get. Now, if you want to, you can grab the Gravitino Balls, but it will trigger Sentinels showing up, and even though they're worth quite a bit of money, they will chase you. So unless you take them all out or you hide from them long enough, it isn't really worth it just yet, especially early game. But you can do it if you want. So now that we have our three keys, we can repair them. And what happens? We get a rare item that's 970 years old. Well, that's pretty neat. But what is it worth? Let's take a look. 719,000 units. And I pulled new things out of here that have been worth anywhere between about 180 to 200,000 all the way up to almost 2 million units. So that is really very much worth your time to go get one of these because it's a quick and fast way to get lots of credits in early game. So that said that you're done with this area, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. You can get some more of the ancient keys, but let me go ahead and demonstrate what happens when you grab that Gravitino ball. Okay, you ready? So I'm going to grab it in such a way that I'm facing this direction. And you see, we have four sentinels that are attacking. But the only thing you can do, see I'm detected, but if I can run away far enough, they'll start searching. So if I can stay out of range of them for the next 30 seconds, I should be in good enough shape that I can just get back to my ship. If you get in your ship right away, the flying sentinels will appear in their ships to attack. They can sense you, so they're trying to follow you. So you see they're over there. I just gotta go down a little bit further for a few more seconds and then... deactivate it. So even if I run in front of them right now, they're not gonna care. See? No problem. So, you're in good shape. Just stay away from them for about 30 seconds. And what do we get? We get a Gravitino Ball that's worth 40000 by itself. Which is pretty good money. Still not quite as much as a Larval Core, but hey, worth a decent amount of money. Okay, so we're done with this area here. So, let's take a look around and see what kind of creatures we've got. Okay, here's one. How many we got on this planet? Should tell us in just a moment. Seven. Okay. There's two. Uh, seems to be one down there, but it might be under the ground. But we have a third one here. Ah, same one as the one that was down there. That's good. I think I saw a flying creature. Four. Oh. And five. And we have two more to find. And I swear if it says they're underground, I'm going to scream. Okay, no, I won't scream, but I'll be upset. Okay, there's one over there. Let's see what he is. Hmm, big guy. Okay, that's six, and it looks like we have one more to discover. Let's find out what kind of creature he is first before we figure anything else out. Ground. So, not underground. We just need another ground-based creature. So, we're just looking for another red dot. Just 
just want to make sure it doesn't say he's anywhere special. Nope, just rare ground, and see, this one found only in the south, but we happen to find him. We're not quite in the south, but we're pretty far. Okay. We'll just go someplace else and see if maybe that red dot will show up. All right, let me pause for, for just a second. I, this one shouldn't take long, anywhere near as long as what was happening on the other planet. I was there for days. All right, game time days, but still, days. Uh, I'll be right back. And looks like we found our elusive number seven. Okay. So we'll see at the bottom right. It's going to tell us. Just a moment. We found all seven. So what happens? By finding all of them, we get 1,750 nanite bonus. Now, if we upload each individually. Okay. If we upload individually. It's not showing me right now. Oh, I know where to do this. Hold on. Let's go to the other planet we were on. Not that planet. This is the planet we are on. If we load them up individually, okay? See, we would have gotten 1750 for them. And F to upload. Watch our nanites. We're at 341. See? Five. 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 That's all we would get. Okay? But... If we load them individually here, too, see, we're only getting five apiece. So we could do that and get all five like that, and then get the rest. So now that we have 2,000 nanites, now we can spend it somewhere. You notice I've been scanning everything, and I ended up with 30,000 nanites. Now you can get upgrades to your scanner, to your analysis visor, that will allow you to get a lot more money for scanning items. So let me work my way back to the ship and we're going to make our way to the space station from this point. Be right back. So as I head to the space station, I wanted to show you something real quick. I don't know if we'll be able to catch up to these guys. But most places have exotic ships. The one on the left is an exotic ship. See? Look at that. It's a ball. There we go. And they're off. We won't catch him now. Anyway, it's too much of a pain in the neck to try to catch him. But that means that they have exotic ships in this particular location. Ignore the mystery signal, please. It is not the mystery signal you care for. I don't want to talk to anybody right now. If I did, I wouldn't be doing a video. I'd be doing a live stream. But that's not important. There's our music for the space station whenever you arrive for the very, very, very first time. Forgot about that. Okay. So now, the best thing to do in most situations is to go ahead and sell these to a person who owns a ship, one of the NPCs that will land. And you'll get this pretty much around the same amount of money that you're going to get from turning it in at a trading terminal like the one on the wall over there. That wall right there. This this thing right here. Back to trade terminal. You could sell it here if you wish. Under sell. But, even though you might get some pretty decent money for all these things, you could hurt the economy by selling large amounts of certain items. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a ship to arrive. Hey, look, a ship arrived. And we're going to walk over and we're going to sell to them. Now, usually they come in waves. A lot of guys didn't realize this. I had uh, one person I work with who's been playing the game for a little bit now did not realize that they came in waves. This is what's considered the first wave. They will always come in four ship waves. You may see three, and then a fourth one comes up as one leaves or something to that effect, but it's always considered a wave. So we can now offer to trade, sell, and we'll get about the same amount of money. But that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these. I'm getting 700000 for my for those items. The larval cores, a little bit under... The 0% mark, but that's okay. I don't need those. Album and pearls, we're getting a little bit of a higher demand for them. And you see, we're getting about the same that we were going to be getting through the trade terminal. But it does not affect the economy of the system. And see, these give a little bit less, but that's okay. We're going to get rid of it anyway. So that gives you a rough idea of what you can sell. And see, I've already got 1.8 million. 1.8 million credits. So I can buy quite a bit with 1.8 million credits, as you might imagine. I'm probably going to get an achievement here any second. 
It's going to tell me that I'm kind of a greedy person of some sort and getting a lot of money. I don't know. There it is. Told you it was coming. Entrepreneur. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and kick that off of there. So we're going to walk over to this guy. So remember, we wanted to upgrade. Let me go to the other one over here for the multi-tool. So remember, I told you it would be better to upgrade. Ooh. What have we here? Ah, C-Class. That's a shame. But where there's a C-Class one, there might be a B or an A or an S-Class on the planet. Interesting. Hmm. Anyway, moving along. Stop getting distracted. So we go to the multi-tool person here. We've got about 2,000 nanites. So let's see what we can buy from him. If he'll ever show us what he's selling. Okay. Scanner modules is what we're looking for. By upgrading them, you will get more money for the discovery. But C-Class is your lowest, and you see it only costs about 79 80 to get one of those. We get mining beam modules, as you can see here. So the other one that we have, the other multi-tool that we have, already has an S-Class mining beam, which makes it run better. If we can get something that is a more of a discovery-based one, which I, obviously we're going to find that we don't, we're not in the right system for it. Um... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the scanner module just so I can show you what I'm talking about. And I'll just put it on this multi-tool that I currently have. So here it is. I'm going to go ahead and install it. So there's my scanning tool. We put it there, right? So see what happens? By now it gives us an increase in the rewards of discovering plants at a plus 1,915%. So we were getting like 200 and 500 apiece. And it gives us a little bit of a bit about hey this is what upgrades do now you'll also notice I had that other upgrade in here and I'm not going to do this upgrade right now I don't really have any use for it at the moment but let's go ahead and see what else we can do so I'm going to go down to a planet and we're going to discover a plan and I'm going to show you the difference between them so you that you understand why it's such a good idea to get the upgrades early on when you can so back to our paradise planet, which happens to be right out, right off of a space station, which is fantastic. You can't get a better grouping than this. I seem to have gotten lucky with this particular um, run because of the fact that I started off on a pretty decent planet. I found a sentinel pillar right away. I got a free multi-tool. I mean, and I come here and I find a trade station immediately, a landing pad. I don't know what's going on, but this is pretty cool. So, we got some plants here. I just want to show it to you real quick, and then we're going to call this one quits. Okay. Let's get up here to where there's an actual plant I can look at. Yep, that mushroom there is a plant. We'll go ahead and do it. So, as I look at it, you see I have it undiscovered, and watch the reward I get now. Instead of 200 or 500... 5,527 for just one plant. This one? Same amount. Now, occasionally you're going to come across plants that are going to be more expensive. And there we go. So that gives you a rough idea of what happens in discovering these plants. Yep. But see, I just made 20,000 where I would have made about two grand. Now, with an S-Class upgrade for the scanner, you would get a lot more money. So, I think we ought to call it quits here. I think, uh, what, 45 minutes, 48 minutes is long enough for one of these little runs. So, I hope you enjoyed what you saw here. I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, or even an idea, throw that at me. If you say, hey, I want to know more about this, can you tell me about this? Absolutely. Be glad to do so. Um, whether I do it as a, you know, somewhat decent sized video like this one, a shorter video of like 15, 20 minutes, or um, do it as a video that's going to last a lot less time. Like if I could do it in a, in a short, I'll do it in a short. But for the time being, this is Elon Paul in this really weird looking outfit that I'm wearing here, the basic outfit, um, signing off once again. Uh, never criticize kind kind people. Uh, oh, never criticize kindness is what I always say. And always try to be kind when you can. And always be truthful in all things, especially to yourself. Because, you know, that's where it starts, folks. Thank you again for watching. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Take care, everybody.